All right, F-350, lots more parts came in. Put them on, let's drive down the road. Here we go. Loose ends that need to be taken care of. Put the radiator back on, put the chassis loom in, and then start incorporating all of these harnesses. Really crappy thing about wiring is that when you've done a good job, nobody knows you've actually done anything. I can officially say that I built this truck with my own blood, sweat, and blood. <laughs> okay, so first things everybody noticed in the last video is that it took a long time to start. And, um, and when we first started it without the cab on it, somebody said, you know what, it does that until you uh, really get it up to temperature, run it long enough to get all the air out of the system. I do believe all the air is out of the system, so we do have a problem. And I'm gonna start with the fuel pressure regulator. So this is what is on the back of the head. Basically, it's just a, a pressure spring that goes against the fuel and allows just enough fuel to go through to maintain your fuel pressure. Now I've got my fast set a bit higher than this, uh, but if a little piece of dirt or something gets stuck in that spring and it and allows fuel to go by, it takes a little bit to get that pressure up. So first things first, we're gonna swap this out. Um, I'm not in for parts changing, but we've basically rebuilt everything. This was on the back of the 3126 that I got out of the Kodiak and it did not start very good. So um, this could very well be the problem just because we did reuse the old one, but so much of this is new that I'm okay with replacing the parts that I haven't replaced yet. And then if there is still an issue, we can diagnose it after that, but I'm hoping this is it. Now, um, I did cut the firewall out of the 2010 and weld it in the back. So there is a lot of room at the back of the head. This, I would not have been able to change this um, if I did not do that. There's enough room back there that I can lean over. The biggest thing is just getting there, but um, should not be a big deal to swap this. You can fit this engine where it sits with the original firewall if you wanted to do uh, a project like this yourself, but it is extremely, extremely tight back there then. So you more than likely would have to have this pressure regulator where I have the fuel pressure sensor from the Holly there. So I'm gonna swap this, basically just R&R, &R, take the other one out, pop this in, and we'll crank her over and see if that fixes it. Here we go. Okay, fittings in. No, uh, no glow plugs yet. They're not coming on, so I gotta look into that, but we'll see what my pressure gauge is reading at. I'm seeing 76 pounds on fuel pressure there. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'll pressure. Okay, so that's not what I wanted to happen. So, a couple things that can happen. We did add this big filter on here, and that could be an issue. I'm wondering if there's air stuck in here, and it takes a while for the oil pressure to compress the air, and then go and fire the injectors. So, um, what we can do is just bypass the filter, so make a hose that goes from here to there, and that would potentially take care of that. I can crank it over and leave the, put this in a jug and make sure we fill that right up. Uh, maybe that's an issue, but maybe it's just coming in right through. Maybe there's just a tiny bit of air stuck on the top there. But before I do any of that, I'm going to take it down the road. Maybe there is still air in there and after working it, it'll come out on its own. That's not great, but um, my fuel pressure is now more steady. That was bouncing around a lot before, so. in this 
this isn't working either. So we're gonna trace this back um, because when I put my RPM up like that, I should be able to raise the RPM up and that's not doing anything. So uh, we got something going on there too. That's a little stuff. Not a big deal. I'll keep plugging away at it. I think for now, um, I'm gonna button everything up nice and neat. Try to get my doors working. So my power windows, my power locks, and then my keyless, and then hook them up to the interior lights. Try to get the interior lights working and then uh, go from there. So yeah, not great, but I don't think we have a problem just yet. We're just gonna keep plugging away at it. Okay, so this is my plug coming from my Ford wiring harness from the 2010. And this is the plug coming and going to my two doors and my power locks for the rear doors on the 93. So I figured out when you give the power to these plugs, I got power locks if I give power to that plug and the windows work on that one, that's my ground. So I just need to take the power and the ground off of this plug and tee it into here. And then I've got my power stuff working. Now I can also take the pins and I check that with the keyless lock. Um, these pins power up, these two on the side here. So all I need to do is tee into my power locks and then uh, my keyless will work. This thing never had all the proper locks working. My solenoid is seized down below there. Um, on this side, the other three, I need to lube them up and clean them up. Um, but we'll wire it up for now. I could use the um, window switches off of the 2010. So then if, uh, but the only advantage to doing that is that if I hit the window, um, the window switch goes all the way down. That and my power mirrors. I think I will leave the wiring on this for the power mirrors. So it's just this plug goes to the power mirrors and uh, that's it. Now each one of these has a little circuit board and they might have to talk to each other so it might not even work. This wiring harness for the power mirrors does not go into the um, windows in the lock so that's good. And I also want to take the speaker wires out of it and I need to tie this little pin for my um, interior light. That works exactly the same as what's in the door now. So I just need to take this wire and connect those two. And then also, so these are the keyless locks. So I don't think I'm going, uh, we also have one more plug and that is for the keyless entry, but I don't feel like cutting into my door and putting the keypad there. I don't really see the need for that. On top of that, we don't know what the code is. And I asked the previous owner, he doesn't know. So I don't know if the truck is still there, but then we need to go to Ford and prove that we own the truck and blah, blah. And I don't think it's gonna be worth it. We'll clean up that wiring, tie that all in there nice and neat so that we got power windows and power door locks. I gotta get, get this cable because the cable snapped. Um, so that's not working and tie up those little loose ends, but then the wiring, uh, of course I can, um, I'm gonna shorten this and make that look really nice. And all of that takes a pile of time. We're gonna do that. And that is how I'm carrying on from here. So just check and make sure that our wiring's okay to that door lock, but it, um, it's actually uh, covered in duct tape. So I think that there's been a problem there before. Might as well fix it now. We got power to both plugs, so the wiring's okay. So we just need to tie this plug into, just basically just give power to this harness. And then we've got power door lock and everything figured out. Then what we'll do is just tee into the locks and the plugs from here inside the cab. We don't even need to go inside the door. And then we've got keyless. Awesome. Um, and then we don't have to mess with our uh, fuse panel because our fuse panel, the windows will still be the windows, the door locks will still be the door locks. And once we print a nice uh, thing for this, <laughs> it'll be golden. Here we go. Okay, so I teed the two systems together for the power locks. Now, the fuse running the power locks for the regular cab, which only did two doors, it only had a 20 amp fuse. 
Now I'm worried because I think things are just tight. I gotta lube everything up with some WD-40, but I had to put a heavier fuse in there because it kept popping the fuse. But um, we do have working locks there and here. Nice. All right, so order this motor. I will wire it in properly, clean everything up. We'll put some nice Deutsch connectors in there rather than these crappy plugs that came in there originally. So we can still plug everything in and unplug everything as we should. And then also run our power windows. And the nice thing is when you lock and unlock, um, the lights also come on. Nice when you come up to the truck and the lights come on. So I gotta tie in the handlebar lights yet and the interior lights and man oh man we're getting there we're getting there boys it's gonna be like a factory nice truck okay so my windows and my keyless and my door locks all works proper but i'm rearranging the wiring a little bit um the original wire that i used for the door locks isn't a heavy enough gauge to pop the locks so I need to change that. That has to be a battery power. And originally I had a battery power coming through the firewall from the uh, fuse panel under the hood. And I was gonna use that to power my transmission. Instead, I'm gonna use that to power my, uh, my door locks. The window uh, key power wire is a heavy enough gauge so I can use that and move that over. And then the uh, door lock keyless uh, power, I'm gonna use that to power my airbags. So I need to grab power for my transmission controller here. I hot wired it before just to see if I got communication. I don't have communication, but I did get a pin out from Excalibur and all my pins that need powers and grounds are active. They are working the way that they're supposed to. I'm gonna hook everything up properly now and I'm gonna try and tie into this fuse box here. So this is the fuse box that's under the kick panel. Now number one and two are um, not used. That's 30 amp and a 15 amp, and that's perfect for me. And if I trace the ohms on them, they go to the pins on this plug. So those pins are open. So the 30 is a bigger plug and the 15 is a smaller. And when I check that plug, those pins just aren't physically there. But if I check the continuity, that is only uh, connected to those two pins. So uh, when I cleaned the shop, I did uh, take all of my wiring and um, put it in garbage bags and I did not toss it in case I needed something. Look how nice and clean the shop is. Um, but now I get to take that bag and toss it all over the floor again, see if I can find that other pin from my second um, dash and then I can pull that pin out and run that pin nice and neat. That way I've got no butt connectors, everything's stock and th that fuse I can label it for the transmission and it's, uh, just like factory. So a little bit longer steps, but it will look nicer in the end. Here we go. I think that's the one. That one. continuity between these prongs and those terminals on the fuses now we should have 15 and 30 amp available to us which we'll pop this into this plug and we'll be golden or not that plug this plug this plug we'll pop it into this plug we'll pop it into the proper plug how's that okay so these are all of my extra wires coming out of the plug this plug was not populated much at all and I just took the old the old circuit board from the other one. Uh, this is actually off of the uh, power stroke. Pulled the cover off and you can see how everything gets populated. So everything on this bar um, is battery power all the time. It's just this strip right here that um, is key power. Now a couple of them that were the spares in here don't actually go anywhere. None of them get connected to any of these pins. There's a couple that I can grab off of the um compass the four-wheel drive and there's one other one i already forget but those uh key powered fuses connect to pins so i've taken the wires out of my other plug which was back there put them in there labeled them all 
So this is Fuse 19, it's 25 amp, nice big wire. This one, um, just gotta label that, the key powers yet, but they're like seven and a half, 10 amp. We'll hide those in the dash when we don't need them and just pull the fuse so these wires will be dead. But when we need them for later, um, they will be available to us. The pins are super easy, you pop this plug out. This locks the pins in place. And then uh, all the pins just have a little black tab on the inside. You take a flat screwdriver or a smaller, uh, like a, a little pick, just pop that tab off. You can pull the tab out the back and then shove them back in again. Just have to keep in mind that every different plug has different spades in it. So I couldn't use any other spades except for this plug on my spare harness. So I only had um, half the wires. I, I've taken both plugs now, put them into one plug and ended up with all of these extra wires that are properly fused into my fuse box. So it looks factory. We'll get Aaron to relabel that fuse panel and then um, she's good as gold. Here we go. Okay, so I have all these wires. We got big wires, little wires, medium wires. I wonder if one of those could be to move my seats forward and back. No, that's crazy talk, crazy talk. We'll wire in the seats later. There we go. Okay, so to tie in my handle lights, I'm gonna run new wires, cause I don't like, I don't like this stuff. These connectors and that. We'll start over. I don't like those blue tie togethers and it's cheap wiring, but anyway. Um, Ford does leave a nice plug for you. This is what it looks like. It's on the driver's side. It would be right around here. And that's for your roof lights. Now, I'm still torn as to whether I want to cut holes in my roof or not and put the cab lights on. For now, I'm just gonna wire the, the handle lights in there and that would look, it would look pretty sick with all the lights on, cab lights and everything. I'm gonna leave that for now, um, but I know where the plug is. But anyway, I'm gonna tie these handle lights into it. That way, when you hit the keys or the remote, these will light up along with the headlights. And then when you turn your lights on, these will come back on again too. It'll be so pretty. I gotta give it to Ford. They do leave the plugs here. They leave other random plugs terminated. If you want fog lights, you can just replace this switch with the factory one from Ford. This one doesn't have the fog light option, but the wiring is there. And then there's two terminated plugs on your uh, front bumper uh, in the right area too. So if you get the Ford fog lights, you just plug them in. You just replace the switch, plug it in, plug it in, done. But uh, one thing at a time. We get these lights working. That, and then the speakers in the back. So I gotta pull the plastic off and add the speaker wires. Should almost add a little baby speaker here. Maybe not. <laughs> and then just about ready to start putting stuff back together again. So um, yeah, we're moving right along. Okay, got a lot of the wiring cleaned up inside here. Got the speakers all hooked up, so all the wiring's hooked up for the speakers. Uh, I have to install the stereo and stuff that yet, but uh, I've spent the last day or so messing around with the interior lights. I got the interior lights working, and if those doors were closed, I could push on this sensor and I could show you that they work. But that is the F350 wiring from 1993, so the second you close the door, the light goes off. I prefer to run it off of the 2010 because it dims a little bit, looks a little cooler and it stays on and then it would work with this as well. The issue is that these switches in the door to turn the light off on the F350 are normally open and on the F550, the 2010, they're normally closed. If, if I set it the same, whatever they are, they're opposite. So light only works when the doors are closed <laughs> and it goes off when you open the door so i can i can either get all new sensors for the door um the driver's door is on here but the all the other doors are in um in here on the post so i'm not going to worry about it right now because it does work and all of them do work uh when i get to messing with the steps i can add it then because i can run it through relays 
And if I'm running a relay to energize a solenoid to open, I can use the 87A or the 87 to do the opposite. So I can tell these sensors to run the relay opposite and I can power the light that way. I'm not gonna do that right now though because I wanna get the truck on the road and uh, so do you guys. So we'll continue that when the weather is crappy, the weather's still good out. So I wanna take it for a drive. Um, we're far enough that uh, it will look complete and feel complete. It's not as complete as I'd like it to be in my head, but to any normal person, when you open the door, the light's gonna come on and it works. So I'm gonna install the stereo, uh, make sure all these wires, so these are the wires for the uh, airbag solenoids. And then uh, they, they cobbled the wiring for the uh, brake controller, so I have to fix that yet, but everything else is working. We got uh, power windows, power locks, interior light, speakers, stereo, so we're almost ready to put the interior back in it again. For the last time, bolt things down properly, and if I have time, maybe, just maybe I can wire in those seats, I don't know, we'll have to see. Anyway, here we go. Okay, things are starting to look a little cleaner, I got the radio in there. Um, so we got the holly dash lighting up. We got that lighting up. So life is good. Um, the only small issue is the radio works off of the door sensor because your radio stays on after you turned your key off. But I did tie it into the door thing. So now when I push the button, it does shut off. But not a big deal. We'll wire that in later properly. Um, I got it working so that it doesn't stay on for 20 minutes or whatever it is. But I got exciting stuff happening because I was thinking about the relays on the uh, door switches to flip them around and keep them normally closed and normally open so that the interior lights and everything work off of the 2010. That got me thinking, I wonder if I can do something with that for the airbag sensors as well. So I got an extra two wires on the um, 93 wiring that are powered up on my plug when the interior lights are on. So um, I pulled the fuse for now because the doors are open, so I'm killing the battery. But what I can do, I found Amazon, $10 for adjustable, normally closed pressure switches. So what that means is I'm gonna put a pressure switch in the um, airbag sides of the air tank, set it to maybe like 60 PSI. So when the air pressure drops, it's automatically going to turn on my valve, open the valve and put more air in the bag so I can set the front, back, whatever I want. Now when I open the door, I'm gonna put that pressure sensor line into a relay. So when you open the door, it's going to automatically activate the switch to dump the air and then it will disconnect the power to fill the air. So what that means is as soon as you open the door, the airbags are gonna drop all the air out of the vehicle. You're gonna lower it. It's only gonna be like two inches or something. It's still gonna look cool. It's gonna sound awesome. And then as soon as you close the door, the truck is gonna lift right back up again into its ride height. Oh, I'm so excited. So <laughs> later we'll get a proper airlift system or something with level sensors and blah, blah. But for now, $10 off of Amazon and a couple more wires and uh, we're gonna make that work. But regardless, tomorrow, we're gonna put the HVAC stuff in there, tidy up the last of the dash, secure all the wire, loom all the wire. Um, all of these are there. This is my uh, cab light that I just unhooked for my uh, interior lights. Clean everything, vacuum it once more. And then, uh, oh man, that's exciting times. Here we go. Okay, so uh, we got a nice center uh, wooden panel for this uh, Ford because we had the work truck edition. The issue is it came with your automatic climate control and your built-in heated seats. And these panel, this panel goes straight across while our um, economy ones, the circle's bigger. So I had to make these bigger just to fit them in. Halfway through, I realized that uh, we did get all nice wood trim for the rest of the dash, but it's not the same color. This is actually a lot lighter. So those are sticker hits. I think I'm gonna let Aaron do that. I'm gonna let him clean everything, wipe it down after we got it in and uh, glue that in. But in the meantime, I'm gonna keep going. I just put this one in. Es essentially, we have to clean this thing up and uh, pop the lick it and stick it's on that. So um, 
what I'm going to do is this would have been your 4x4 switch and the economy one two wheel drive was just blank. So we can put our uh, up and down airbag switches in there. We're going to do that. A brake controller and auxiliaries there. These are hidden, I think, because they go to um, the heating ducts or something for the center console. We will get our heated seats working once I have everything working to my satisfaction. For now, we're just going to do my thing and then carry on from there. So um, here we go. Okay, so my rocker switches are essentially two switches. This bank is completely separate from that bank. So what I need to do is uh, jump power from one switch to the other. So the main the main switches have power. Now I only need to use one bank, but they need to be separated because I want it to raise individually, but I want them to drop in unison. But if I make them drop in unison, I won't be able to drop pressure on my own. So what I need to do is run two relays off of my door signal because that will separate the two. Um, and then same way, use the pressure switch um, for the front and the back. So we'll wire those up. Um, it'll make more sense when, when you see it working, but basically you can't because I'm, yeah. Otherwise, when you drop one, it would drop both and I can't have that. So. Well, uh, these are all the wires, figure out which ones they are, just touch positive to these, make it go up and down, and then we'll add the relay, and we're golden. Here we go. Okay, so I've teed off all the wires. So my up is a blue wire, and because the sky is up, and then the green wire is the down. So they are on the switches like that. So when you toggle it one way, you go up, and the other one goes down. Now those blue wires go to the center terminal on my relay, and they are normally closed to this terminal right here. So um, the pressure switch is going to power this terminal and it's going to fill the bags without me telling it to do anything to a predetermined um, setting, but I can top it up more if I want by just hitting the power by bypassing that switch. Now, as soon as um, I open the doors, um, it is going to power one of these terminals and um, power the relay, which will disconnect the power to my fill and will give power to my dump, which is going to go into my dump solenoids here. So what that'll do is as soon as my pressure goes below the predetermined amount, it will power up the solenoid and will power up this terminal and jump that from here to here and disconnect this one right here. Um, that way I can top up my airbag um, and as soon as I open my door, it'll dump. As soon as I close the door, it'll air back up again. The only issue with that is I cannot go below a certain amount um, of, of my bags. I can't drop it below a 60 PSI and that's fine. If I blow an airbag or anything silly like that, then I have to pop the fuse out because otherwise it'll keep the It'll keep it open and keep trying to fill it just like an air ride system would but uh, hopefully we don't run into that so um aaron actually is going to bring me my sensors so we can power up this side and run the airline in now um because the wiring is all kind of under the dash i don't want to run the sensors out to the side so what we'll do is tee into the airline and bring the airlines into the cab and then i have to put my own um pass through on there a bulkhead because they didn't have any in town. So I'll just take a bolt, I'll, I'll tap, I'll drill it, tap it, uh, pipe thread on both sides, run the airlines in, and then uh, I should be able to have that working properly. Um, they didn't have enough quarter inch unions for me either, so I might have to, this is all I had in town. So I got my, my T's to get into there, my union, um, this will have the sensor on the top, and then I need some for the bulkhead, but I only have two for the bulkhead. So I'll do what I need to inside, that way I can put the interior back in it again. Maybe I can run around and see if Phil's got a couple more uh, T's or 90's. I do have two 90's, I'm short two. So not a big deal, we just keep working away and ordering more parts. Here we go. Okay, so Aaron dropped off my pressure sensors, but I just hooked it up. Aaron, you gonna open the door? I think I have it hooked up right. <laughs> That's 
So and then at the same time, this the drop down steps will be coming out. That's so then this switch is supposed to be so when you close the door, it goes right back up again. So it's the little things. <laughs> yeah. Just need that extra little boost. Yeah. <laughs> it really is only like two inches, <laughs> an inch maybe, but it's the uh... every inch helps. <laughs> <laughs> every inch helps. <laughs> I love it. Only issue is I gotta get the pressure sensors working. I'll do that now because when I fill it up to uh, my shopper, which is 120 psi, and let it go all the way to the top, then the valves aren't strong enough to open against that 120 pounds. So, um, yeah, I know that this is Amazon garbage. This is kind of proof of concept. Make sure that it works and that it's worth it, and then we'll do a proper setup later. But that takes money, and right now. We're just goofing off. Here we go. So with the door open, you can't add because it'll just dump it right away. Yeah. Nice. Oh, so wonderful. Here we go. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Rich, if you power up the solenoid with a battery so that it works when you first get into the truck without the key on, and you're gonna lose air, then that sensor is going to tell the solenoid to open and my battery will be dead. And I gotta be honest, I didn't think about that until you did just now either. So, um, laying awake at night, I couldn't sleep last night. What I figured out was if I add it to my original interior light, that light stays on for 20 minutes or so, or about 10 minutes, after you get out of the vehicle because it doesn't know that you open the door. And when you unlock the door, the light comes on. So as you walk up with the key fob and you unlock the truck, it powers up the solenoid through a relay, um, and that will be through the 30 and the 87 and then I will hook key power up to the 87A. So as soon as you put your key in and turn, that relay will power up the key. This terminal will be dead. And as you're driving, it will add air to the bags as needed. As you shut it off, it will go to the interior light, which will turn that relay on, give me power for 10 minutes, then shut off and it will not kill my battery. Grab some relay, nice relay holders out of the bus. For my pass-through, I'm going to use this half-inch threaded rod from Princess Auto. It's going to drill a hole through the center of it on the lathe, tap it, and then you got nuts on both sides, and we got a nice, simple, cheap pass-through. Unfortunately, the half-inch threaded rod wasn't enough. It snapped as soon as I uh, threaded it, pipe threaded it, so I had to grab some 5 8 but that's stainless. So um, now we've got my pass-through, so we'll mount these two nicely right here, so when I pull the cover off I can adjust how much air I want in there um, and again just temporary but we'll make it nice enough that it can stay permanently temporary for a little while because you know how things go so this relay will run off of the interior light it will power the other two relays I thought I needed the third relay but I don't because as long as I disconnect that uh, one door sensor and put it back on the 93 wiring, the interior light will always be on as long as I have the key on and it'll be on for 10 minutes after we quit. So it's actually perfect. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I got my nice Deutsch uh, connector here kit from uh, Wirecare. We're gonna put some nice uh, six plug in there. If I get the pins wrong, I can move the pins around. Key power to here and that comes out of these pins. Yeah, we, we got it, we got it, here we go. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The sensor's coming in, the relay's nice and neat, and then a nice little plug. My switches work the way that they're supposed to. Up, up, down, down, but the relay, the ground needs to be hooked up. So I'll bolt it in place just with one bolt, make sure that I got the grounds, it's doing what they're supposed to do. And then uh, I'll put some loom around this and finish it up and then tidy that up. But that's, that takes a while, but it's there. We got it, here we go. Okay, isn't that beautiful? Um, no, not that. This. Look how beautiful that just tucks away in there. It looks all professional stuff. I think from here, I'm gonna clean everything up. I'm gonna 
zip tie stuff and tuck it away. I'm not gonna loom this wiring just yet, everything that's on the floor. I'll put everything away in the dash the way it's supposed to be. More than likely, I'm positive I gotta pull some stuff apart again. All that duct work and stuff, that's all has to be done yet, and that's perfect for this winter, but we could spend another month on wiring and doing stuff. Let's, let's just take it down the road. Here we go. Okay, so the really crappy thing about wiring is that when you've done a good job, nobody knows you've actually done anything. It's kind of like body work. It's very, very disappointing, really. It's like, look, look, I did nothing. You did what? Exactly. Um, I shortened this one up. That was a, uh, this big clunky harness. So we're going to tuck that all in nice loom. I got to run this wire in that loom as well. This is for my check transmission wire. So when that throws a code, that'll come up onto the dash as well. I think these are speaker wires, so I'm going to try and see if uh, those are speaker wires. We're going to add a couple speakers to you. So um, now I don't really like doing it, but I'm going to have to run my airlines over top of my line. I hate crossing stuff, but um, it is what it is. So I'll do the pass through towards the back and then we'll rivet them down and then make sure they don't get in the way of the console. And then we're we're getting there. Here we go. Worked pretty late last night. Got a few things to button up today before we can take it down the road. Got a couple issues though. It is pouring rain and windy. Uh, it is not nice outside. So it's kind of important because the box, the bottom of the box, we haven't uh, undercoated that yet. Um, we want to put bed liner in the back. Not that that matters a huge bunch, but to take it down the road, I'm going to get the whole truck all dirty and it's going to take me hours to clean that to prep it so I can paint it and get it clean. So we're gonna keep working. Um, I gotta, yeah, finish off those few last things to make it roadworthy. But maybe it's the universe telling me that uh, I still have a little bit more to do. But um, starting to look like a truck. Regardless, nice coming into. I gotta put door panels on yet, but we are slowly and surely getting there. Um, yeah, she's pretty nasty. Uh, the electricity, or as the, us Ontarios call it, hydro, went out for about an hour already. Came back on again, but I don't know if you can hear that. Pretty torrential wind outside and rain. So anyway, back at it. Here we go. All right, so I got my hood latch on. I had to make my own little bracket for the back there. A bolt in the back, not a big deal. Um, and that's because we went with a massive intercooler and a massive radiator. Building this little bracket to hold the radiator in place. And uh, I can officially say that I built this truck with my own blood, sweat, and Blood, because <laughs> the uh, I was pulling on the ratchet, and uh, it was the battery. The battery came out, hit me square in the nose. So I think the bleeding stopped, so we can go back to work. I did move my overflow tank to go on the bottom right radiator hose rather than top, so put that back on again. Of course, my three-quarter inch hose is not long enough. Um, because I need to now make it over to the other side and there is none in town. Everybody's waiting for parts. So I got a piece of aluminum, just cut some barbs on the end. You can see that. Um, and now that will get mounted on the bottom of the radiator. And then I have enough hose to just go from one end to the other. So pop that on, we'll throw some coolant in it and another big step done. Here we go. Okay, so you got the pipe going nicely along the bottom of the radiator over to the lower rad hose. Everything's nice and secure. Well, that actually looks nicer than if it was a rubber hose anyway. So, um, we're ready for some coolant. And I bet you didn't know that Shell Rotella actually makes coolant as well. You guys know we've got Rotella T4 in the engine as our break-in oil. We'll run that for probably about a thousand kilometers or so. Um, we're probably gonna put it on the dyno with the T4 in it, break it in, and then we'll switch to Rotella T6. Now we also have shell oil in the transmission. Um, and we thought, you know what? It's a shame not to put shell Rotella coolant in because then it's got all three, right? So now this is long life. This will last the life of the truck. It is nitrate free, uh, really good for uh, heat transfer and it's good for the water pump seals, all that good stuff. So we're gonna throw that in, check it for leaks. And that's the last fluid I gotta keep inside this truck. So here we go. 
Well, crap. If you can see that, down below there is some coolant and it's leaking from behind the water pump. So I gotta pull the water pump off. Not a big deal. I actually have lots of room. I can still pull the shroud off if I need more, but I'll pull the alternator off, pull the AC compressor off, and it's only three bolts that hold the water pump to it, or five, sorry. And then uh, I'll yank that out. I gotta do that after supper though. I will be back. <laughs> So this one's on Scott because there's a gasket there. There's supposed to be one there, but it was missing. So this was gone. Not a big deal. Take about an hour to fix and a little bit of a mess because it's coolant, but uh, we'll throw that gasket on. I have it and I'll put it back together again and tighten everything back up again. Some kitty litter. Here we go. Okay, so went over the truck again, tried to find anything that I left in the frame rails, in the uh, cradle for the engine. Um, found a couple things, just ran my magnet in between there. Uh, before you do any road tests, make sure that there's nothing that can fall on the exhaust. This is the first time that the exhaust is really going to get any sort of temperature in it, so you don't want to melt any wires and fry anything. Check all the fluids. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Oil, transfer case, transmission, um, the engine, uh, front and rear diff. Very important, torque the tires. So I torque the tires again. Also, because we had the steering off, checked, uh, double checked all the U-joints from Borgeson to the steering wheel, making sure that those are tight. Um, and then basically making sure that nothing's gonna fall off. So this, I'm super nervous. Uh, just about as nervous as I was when I started it. This is basically just to see if the transmission will shift, make sure that everything's good there. And then basically we're just gonna quick, quick road test, not even to fully get it up to temperature and that. We're gonna take it out and then bring it back again. The weather's not great, the roads aren't great, but we're gonna do it anyway. And then uh, make sure that there's no leaks, that nothing's rubbing, that the fan belt's staying on, all that sorts of beautiful stuff. Hopefully there's no weird noises. And uh, here we go. I don't think it shifted there. I think it should have shifted already. I'll go a little bit farther. I'm a little nervous, man. <laughs> so far, so good. I already got the truck dirty. It's not too loud. I'm happy with that. We didn't end up in a ditch. The brakes work good. The steering works good. So it's been a great, good test drive. 
but it's not shifting. Um, so we got to figure that out. We got to uh, recheck some wires, make sure that everything's plugged in, make sure that no fuses popped and that uh, we're still communicating. I didn't have the scanner on it. So just like I said, quick run up and down. I wish it would have shifted, but that leaves room for another video. We're going to stop it here just because of the weather and that. We were already late with the video and we apologize for that. Still lots to get done. Uh, we got to do the backup camera. Uh, we're going to uh, finish the box. So bed liner in the back. We'll put the cat on the back. We'll do the badges on there. Um, finish the interior. So there's lots more on F350. Unfortunately, this is Canada and it is winter time. But now when anybody says I don't finish anything, show them a video of it going down the road at least um, because today was a good day. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Um, lots more stuff coming up on it and also on all our other projects. I'm going to jump on the C10, so there will be videos of that coming up real quick and lots more. Here we go. I got to go sit down.